So last but not least, let's talk about adrenal disorders. So the adrenal gland sits on top of the kidneys. Um, and what exactly does it do? So it is responsible for create, um, releasing these corticoids, glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids. Um, and they both have different functions. So part of your adrenal glands function is the go, 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 um, the stress response, you know, kind of the response that you get like when you're taking an exam or stressed out. Um, it helps us to secrete cortisol so that we can respond accordingly. So in other words, like if a bear was chasing me, um, my body would secrete more cortisol to help me to have the kind of that fight or flight, I'd release catecholamines and be ready to go um, jump in and fight a bear, whatever I needed to do. Um, it's gonna turn on the functions that I need to, for that like kind of fight or flight response and it's gonna turn off non-essential functions. Um, so that we're gonna talk about disorders that mess with that function, that, uh, that cortisol release, um, where you either have too much or not enough. Um, we also have disorders that are met, that mess with our aldosterone. If you remember aldosterone, that has to do with that renin angiotensin aldosterone system. That's the last leg of that. So your adrenal cortex also secretes aldosterone. And if you remember aldosterone, that's the hormone that helps to um, hold on to sodium and water while letting go of potassium because anytime you hold on to sodium, you're going to let go of potassium and vice versa. So um, it is responsible for a lot of that fluid um, and electrolyte balance um, that goes on and um, can have severe effects on many, many different things. But spoiler alert, we're going to get to it soon. All right, so let's start talking. Oh, and I also, there was androgens on there. I guess I can go back. Androgens on there. Um, when I'm talking about androgens, I'm talking about like your male and female hormones. So there's some of those that are released as well. We're mostly focused on talking about disease processes involved with your stress response and your aldosterone, which is your um, sodium and uh, fluid balance. So let's talk about Cushing's disease. Cushing's disease, because remember, again, we always have those extremes. Cushing's disease is when you have too many corticosteroids. And corticosteroids um, are uh, a synthetic, um, you know, they can, they can be synthetically given to you as like um, a medication, like a steroid. Um, it's kind of like mimicking, like instead of cortisol being re released into your body. It's like, here's some extra cortisol being injected into your body. So one of the most common reason that people have too many of that, uh, those corticosteroids is because they're getting them. We're giving them steroids because I'm sure um, that all of you guys have experienced at least one patient um, that has been administered steroids, or maybe, you know, a family member who's gotten steroids. We give steroids to decrease inflammation. So remember when I was talking before about how, when, um, you know, you, um, your body is stressed, um, it secretes that cortisol and cortisol stimulates that fight or flight. It gets you in that mode. Like I need to do something right now but it also turns off other systems because it's saying, hey, right now I've got to stick with this important stuff. I'm dying, a bear's chasing me. I got to do that, those crucial tasks right now. I'm not worried about some of the other stuff like my gastrointestinal function and stuff like that. So the way steroids work is they turn on your go, 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 go. They stimulate a bunch of sugar so that you are um, ready for a fight, but then they turn off your immune system or your immune response and they decrease um, your inflammatory response. So that's where most people take them. Most people take steroids or corticosteroids as a medication to decrease inflammation inflammation or swelling somewhere. Um, so as much as most people think steroids, they think like bodybuilder, someone building something up, um, you know, steroids and cortisol do help to build tissue, but they slow down and break down your immune response or inflammatory response. So you're not going to react, um, you know, to, um, uh, you know, any sort of invader um, the way that you normally would. You're not going to have the same immune response. You're going to have a ton of tissue, <laughs> but it's not going to really help you because you're not going to have that immune response. So most people take steroids so that they can, uh, you know, um, decreased inflammation, like maybe they have swelling somewhere, maybe they have like a lung infection and their lungs are a little swollen. So they take some steroids to decrease that. Um, most of the time they're short term, but sometimes people have to take steroids long term and that's where they can end up getting Cushing's disease. Additionally, they can also get Cushing's disease because of tumors. In other words, there's a tumor that gets on that pituitary gland that affects your secretion of ACTH which is how you produce more cortisol. 
So what does this patient look like that has Cushing's? A patient with Cushing's looks very puffy and pink. So they kind of have the moon red face, they have weight gain, um, they have truncal obesity. In other words, their trunk is very large. Um, they have a buffalo hump sometimes. Like I mentioned, because their stress response is stimulated, they're gonna have high blood glucose. They're also gonna be holding on to water, kind of think of that aldosterone. They're gonna have more aldosterone, so therefore they're gonna have more more water because they have more salt as well. And then in, retu um, in return, because they have more water and more salt, they're gonna have less potassium because they're gonna be wasting that potassium because of that excess aldosterone. So think puffy and pink. Uh, we're gonna do diagnostic testing. We're gonna check their cortisol levels and their urine and their saliva to kind of see where they're at. Um, and we're also might do an MRI or CT if we suspect that there's a tumor as the cause. We're gonna treat it if there is a tumor, we're gonna do surgery and radiation. Um, otherwise, we're gonna give medications that are gonna suppress that cortisol. They have too much of that stress hormone. And because of that, they're having a lot of these electrolyte imbalances, this fluid imbalance, this incredible stress response um, that it's actually, um, you know, really wearing their body out. We're also going to do supportive care. We're going to treat their high blood glucose because um, they can develop diabetes and things like that through this. And then we're going to taper their steroids. So this not, might not make sense. It's like, why won't we just take them off their steroids? Well, we're about to talk about what happens if you stop steroids too suddenly. Um, as much as that steroid response is hurting the patient, we can't just stop it. If we go, this is the thing that's telling the body to go. If we just turn that off one day, just turn off that light switch and say, nope, no more steroids. What happens is the body can completely shut down. Um, it can go in complete shock because you lose that push, that drive to go. You lose that sugar rush that you're getting right now. So we always slowly taper them off um, instead of stopping them suddenly. So let's talk about the opposite end of the spectrum. There's also what's known as Addison's disease. So this is where there is decreased function of the adrenal cortex. So we talked about where there's too much cortisol. Now let's talk about when there's not enough. Um, and so what the causes of this is anything that's going to destroy the adrenal gland. So it can be autoimmune causes. It can be from hemorrhage, um, AIDS, infection, chemotherapy, blood thinners. All of these can destroy the adrenal glands, which can therefore destroy um, your function of your cortisol or your adrenal cortex. So what does this patient look like? So remember the last patient was um, pink and puffy. This patient is slowed down and brown. So in other words, they get this bronze skin hyperpigmentation. Everything is slow. They have orth and slow and low. They have orthostatic hypotension. They're weak. They're nauseous. They're having weight loss. Um, they can't eat anything. Um, and it's usually a slow insidious onset. It takes a while for you to get to the point um, where you have such low, um, you're, uh, in other words, your cortisol levels have to get super low over time for you to start having symptoms of Addison's disease. So by the time that you start having symptoms, it's usually very severe and harder to catch up with. So um, you can have a crisis um, with Addison's disease, and that's what's known as an Addisonian crisis. This can happen, like we talked about, if you suddenly withdraw the steroids uh, medication from the patient, um, if they have adrenal surgery, um, if there, uh, we caught up, um, is any destruction of their pituitary glands or even just from stress. So remember that, um, you know, in um, Cushing's disease, you have too much cortisol, too much stress response. In Addison's, you don't have enough. So patients with Addison's cannot handle stress. And I don't mean just, um, you know, emotional stress, but physical stress either. Anything that normally would stress a patient out, it's not safe for patients with Addison's um, because they have too, um, they don't have the defense that they need. They don't have that hormone, that cortisol to be stimulated to respond the way. So if a bear was chasing a patient with Addison's disease, they would not have that same response that you or I would have, and they wouldn't be able to, um, you know, um, react in a way that's actually going to support their body to survive whatever that crisis is. So what happens when they go into crisis is they go into acute adrenal insufficiency. So their blood pressure gets low, their heart rate goes high in response, they are dehydrated. Because of the lack of aldosterone, they have the opposite of what we talked about with Cushing's where they have decreased sodium 
increased potassium and a decreased blood glucose. They don't have cortisol and they don't have aldosterone. So when you don't have aldosterone, remember what happens is, is that you're not holding on to sodium, not holding on to water. So you're dehydrated, your blood pressure's low, um, your sodium's low because you're not holding on to it. And in response, because your sodium's low, your potassium goes high. Um, they can also have fever, weakness, and confusion um, when they get into that crisis. So we treat them with high volumes. They're incredibly dehydrated. We need to replace those volumes, replace that sugar by giving them sugar-infused fluids. Treat those electrolyte imbalances. So um, as a whole in general, that was talking about crisis. So how about in general with Addison's disease? What are, um, you know, our focus? What are we using to diagnose this? So we're gonna check their labs. Like we mentioned, we're gonna have a high potassium, a low sodium and a low blood glucose. So I'm gonna monitor those closely. And then we give them whatever they're missing. So like we talked about here, they're missing steroids, um, that cortisol, those corticosteroids. So we're going to replace that with um, the hormone therapy. They're gonna be on a high, high sodium diet to replace those losses. And we wanna keep their stress low because again, they cannot fight that. Um, being on long-term steroids, like we talked about before, steroids, they help to build up tissue. And those people, when you say steroids, they think of like this bodybuilder guy, but we're talking about corticosteroids. They help to repair tissues um, and um, you know, so, um, get that like, it's time to go, I need to go, 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 go response. And they can provide a lot of relief to patients with a lot of chronic disorders, but in return, they also cause an increased risk of infection. So these are just a few complications of steroids. They have a lot of side effects because when you're messing with that stress response, um, it definitely can cause problems. So long-term, like we talked about, patients that are, have, um, kind of think of the patient with Cushing's to an extreme. So a patient with Cushing's to an extreme, they're gonna have that decreased potassium because they're of that, all those steroid use, that cortisol, 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 um, is gonna cause them to also have um, more aldosterone. Um, and because they have more aldosterone, they're gonna have decreased potassium as well. Um, they're also at increased risk of ulcer, skin breakdown, general atrophy or weakness. Um, they can get diabetes because of that chronic hyperglycemia, like we talked about their risk of infection and their suppressed immune response. They also have, can have um, hypertension, increased blood volume, because remember with that aldosterone, they're holding on to all that volume and salt. They can have very vaso, a lot of vasoconstriction um, for that, like kind of that um, go, go, go cortisol response. They can also be breaking down their bones faster. So I've really got to watch this patient who's going to be on long-term steroid use um, to make sure that they're not having these side effects. So there's two other disorders that can happen in the adrenal glands. The first is hyperaldosteronism. So we've been talking a lot about aldosterone. Remember with aldosterone, that's the one where, um, you know, a lot of times my kidneys are like, hey, I'm not getting enough blood flow. So they stimulate that RAS. And the last part of that RAS is that aldosterone. Um, and that um, causes you to hold on to more sodium and water and then let go of potassium. Um, and so when you have too much, again, it can be from a tumor, it can be from kidney disease or a renal cause, and I'm holding on to sodium, which can cause me to get hypertension, headaches, things like that. Um, but then I'm wasting the potassium, which can lead to muscle weakness, fatigue, and in the worst case scenario, of course, dysrhythmias. Um, and so um, I, this, is, this patient's gonna have an elevated aldosterone level, elevated sodium level, and a decreased potassium level. So um, anytime you see that elevated sodium, you're usually gonna see that decreased potassium right next to it. Um, to treat these patients, if they have a tumor, I'm gonna do surgery or radiation. Um, I'm gonna give them blood pressure meds and potassium sparing diuretics or other words, aldosterone blockers to block. Anytime I have too much of something, I wanna block it. Anytime I don't have enough of something, I wanna replace it. So in hyperaldosteronism, I have too much aldosterone, so I need to block it. I'm also gonna give electrolyte replacement so that I can prevent those dysrhythmias and provide stability to that patient. Yes. Um, last but not least, there's what's called a pheochromocytoma. And this is a tumor on the adrenal glands. Um, and it, what it's actually going to cause you to do is going to cause you to secrete catecholamines. And if you're wondering what catecholamines are, think of like your epinephrine, your fight or flight, your go, go, go. I know we've been talking about cortisol, but these are your extreme um, hormones that are going to cause incredible vasoconstriction um, and all those very severe effects. Vasoconstriction, the tachycardia, that fight or flight, like literally a bear in your living room kind of since 
sensations. So these patients are going to present with three main symptoms. They're usually going to be severe hypertension. I'm talking about like 250 over 120 something. Headaches, profuse sweating. There's all these catecholamines that are being released. We're going to check their urine for catecholamines and do 24-hour testing. We're going to look for that tumor from C in a CT or MRI. And one of the interesting things about these patients is with these tumors, if we press on them, it will actually cause them to secrete more catecholamines. So with these patients, I do not want to palpate their abdomen. Um, so if, if I know a patient has one of these, I want to, I'm not going to palpate their abdomen because I could actually make it worse. We're going to do surgery to remove it. I'm going to give them medications to help them in the meantime, alpha and beta blockers, um, and monitor for diabetes because when they're secreting all of that epinephrine, it can actually cause them to, um, to also um, uh, have problems with their insulin and have problems with their secretion of um, glucose where they're maybe secreting too much with that fight, 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 go, go, go. So yeah. So as a whole, as you can see, adrenal disorders have a lot of very serious consequences. It's all about having that fight um, hormone, having too much of it or not enough of it and what happens then. So I hope that you enjoyed this endocrine disorder series and I'll see you next time. Bye.